Aloha, this is Tom Lesher with the weekly Pele Report. Coming to you live from Istanbul. I just got off the plane. I hope it's not too late here. It is Wednesday. And I know that the new moon is happening practically as I speak. It's happening at 924 in California. And this is at 26 degrees, 55 minutes of Cancer. This is an astrological uh, report for this week. And this week is an intense week. If you haven't noticed, <laughs> I'm sure you have. Um, basically, what's going on here is we've got Mars has moved into the sign of Libra and it is creating a T-square. It's in opposition to the planet of Uranus, and it's square to the planet Pluto. Now we've had this Uranus-Pluto squaring going on for quite some time in the signs of Aries and Capricorn, and now Mars is coming up to really emphasize it. And of course, we also have this new moon happening in the sign of Cancer, okay? And it is in square to the planet Saturn. So, what does that mean? Well, let's look at it. Did I give the day? Today is July 18th. Now, it's a whole lot of shit going on. <laughs> That's what that means. No, number one, we've got Pluto in Capricorn. Yeah, Pluto in Capricorn wants financial and physical security. Pluto in your natal chart and in transits is where you can be obsessive compulsive. There's a high strong emotional need and emotional demand in the sign of Capricorn to really get it together, to set a goal and to go for it and to hold on to what is going to be solid and secure in the future. So this is this Pluto going on. At the same time, we've got this Uranus Uranus in the sign of Aries. Aries is individual, yeah? It's stepping out. And Uranus is freedom, rebellion. So this is a time, you know, Uranus I always associate with Prometheus, the light bearer. He's more than just a light bearer. He is a rebel. Yeah, he stole fire from the gods, Zeus, brought it down to earth, and let's just look at that once. Yes, it's very enlightening, it's very powerful, it's very good, and at the same time, Uranus, Aquarius, and of course a lot of people with planets in the 11th house, can be very extremely rigid. Aqu you know, Aquarius is a fixed sign. Uranus is a fixed planet. And Uranus can have this this mental picture of what life is, of what life means, of what life is about, and can be extremely rigid. Not only rigid, but arrogant. The know-it-all. So wherever we have Aries now, wherever we have Uranus going on now, we can be very inflexible in our own way, in our own time, in our own right, and always being right, and not being there in the heart. Uranus is this third eye, it's the sixth chakra. There's, there is not a lot of heart, it's like lightning, okay? Electricity, the nervous system, it's get it all going. So, you know, this, this is just like, you know, the nutty professor or the genius, but it's very cold, can be cruel, calculating, very powerful and enlightening, but not a real sweetheart. So we've got this Pluto energy <laughs> in Capricorn, this like obsessive, compulsive, goal-oriented, get secure, get solid, and then we've got Uranus over here. It's got to be my way, this way, or the highway. And then Mars comes along into the sign of Libra and triggers all this stuff. 
through our partnership, through our relationship. Mars, again, is desire. It is that powerful masculine stepping out, reaching forward. But I'll tell you, when it comes into the sign of Libra, Mars is desire, Libra is relationship. I desire relationship. Mars in Libra wants to please, wants to cooperate, wants to create actively peace and harmony. So it's a very interesting time. It's a time when we can get really obsessive, compulsive about our own way and create a lot of opposition, a lot of arguing, a lot of debate, create these situations where people challenge us and question us our goals and our needs and we can be just boom shut down go away give up quit but I'm going to say that this Mars and Libra is bringing us a huge opportunity this is really a huge opportunity to see ourselves not only through the eyes of others but to actually create in cooperation with, in community with the other. This is a time where if we can cool our jets and we can be patient enough and we can deal with feelings instead of judgments, then we can really find out and make, become aware of, establish something totally amazing something totally new. This is really a fantastic time, full of fantastic opportunity, because what we want to do is go to the Pluto polarity point. The Pluto polarity point is 180 degrees opposite Pluto, so we've got Pluto in Capricorn, it's down in Cancer. Guess what? Ah, new moon! <laughs> so we've got Uranus and fire, Mars in air, Pluto up here in Earth, and the new moon down here in water, in Cancer. So this says that this T-square, the solution to the T-square is the empty part of the diamond. And that empty part of the diamond with Mars, Pluto, Uranus is Cancer. And that is an opportunity, like all of this whole you know, this whole diamond, this whole T-square is creating these situations where we can get in deeper, deeper touch with our emotional needs, our emotional self, and we can bond and unite and create connection ever better, ever deeper than we could have before. So rather than doing the battling, rather than doing the fighting, I'm going to look at our mantra this week, you know, and the, the mantra for this week is very important, yeah? No longer fearing the needs of others. I listen instead of smother. <laughs> that together we grow and nurture a vast and brighter future. Yeah. No longer fearing the needs of others, I listen instead of smother. That together we grow and nurture a vast and brighter future. This is a time when other people, as our mirrors, can make us aware of our deeper needs, of our deeper feelings than we are even aware of ourselves. And that's the highest manifestation of Uranus and Aries, is totally new self-discovery. So this Mars going through Libra is actually helping us if we can chill out enough to listen and receive and actually hear, okay, I hear you saying that I really am afraid of settling down. Instead of like, 
fearing it, rejecting it, battling it, fighting it, saying you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Just let it soak in for a little bit. Maybe they're saying something that I am not aware of or in touch with myself. It's like we use each other to trigger self-awareness this week. We use each other to create self-awareness this week. That is really, that's really what it's all about. And out of that self-awareness, then with the other person, wow, we create a vast and brighter future. That's, you know, that's, that's, the, that's what's great. I mean, I could go on with the astrology of it, but that's, you know, Jupiter conjunct the south node in the sign of Gemini, ruling the north node, which is the future, vast, Jupiter is vast and expansive, and the north node is future. So it's not just this T-square that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the whole chart. I'm just talking about the whole energetic patterns going on around planet Earth these days. So, I hope that's good for you. I hope you have a good week, that you listen, that you make it happen instead of like fighting it and resisting it and not changing and staying rigid. You know, out of fear and holding on, and I've got my goals, and you're, I'm, I can't change my goals. Change the goals to include the other people. <laughs> so, that's all for now. I hope the sound is good, and I look forward to uh, seeing you again next week. I have some new things coming up. Um, I'm going to be down in uh, Brazil and Peru. It looks like in the month of November, if you need a vacation and want to join me down there, there's going to be more info on Facebook, my website, the newsletter. And uh, I, yeah, I, uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to be doing week long, you know, workshops and things uh, that are going to go a lot deeper into this Lilith material and all the other things I'm presenting. So I hope to see you. I hope all is well. Aloha, namaste.